morning. It's day one in Bergamo. We are down here currently in the lower city and we're gonna head up to the upper city. That division has divided Bergamo since at least Roman times when they had the city and then the suburbia down here. There's almost nothing really Roman about the area at this point, but it's a bunch of old medieval stuff up in the uh, upper city, I believe, and newer stuff down here. We just had some breakfast and we're gonna head up. Oh, and we believe there's a funicular in our near future. Well, we are not gonna miss a funicular if we can help it. Built in the late 1800s, the Funiculare Cita Alta delivers the kinds of views that we have come to expect from a good ride up the hill. Let's head out. There are very few cars in Chita Alta, so most streets are like this, narrow and quiet. This is the wash house of Via Lupo, inaugurated in 1891 to compensate for the lack of running water in people's houses. It's now a nice place to beat the heat a little bit. Washed up. For lunch, we tried Cascancelli, the traditional Bergamasco dumplings, along with a nice caprese salad. That's good. A word on our guidebook. We're carrying around the Blue Guide. This is one of the newer ones that we typically carry around on our trips. This one is from 2005. Now, 17 years old is not the world's newest guidebook, but the Blue Guide focuses so much on history. And a lot of it is the dates and names kind of stuff that really probably isn't gonna change a whole lot. It's current enough that we're able to follow this. This little sidebar is called Lorenzo Loto in Bergamo. And it talks about all of the places that you can see original works of the Renaissance painter Lorenzo Loto across the city of Bergamo. So why don't we take a tour, see how many of these spots we can hit. Behind me is the Cappella Colleone, which was built by the 15th century mercenary general Bartolomeo Colleone for himself as his funerary chapel. And I tell you, that's the way to do it. But what we're here for is the church next door to it, which is the Santa Maria Maggiore, which is where we're gonna start our Lorenzo Lotto tour of Bergamo. The creation of these magnificent inlays began in 1524. They were drawn by Lotto, then the inlays themselves were executed in magnificent detail by Giovanni Francisco Capoferri. Disputes over pay caused the project to drag on, with Lotto's final drawings only arriving in 1531. Sadly, Lotto would never see the final product, which was not complete until 1572, 16 years after his death. Naturally, the church is also jam-packed with other paintings, sculptures, tapestries, and so on. Late 16th century Florentine tapestries. And then over here, in much more vibrant color, very late 17th century Flemish tapestry. In great shape. The tapestry seems to be in front of a painting of exactly the same thing. Funny. Tree of Life fresco from 1347. Partially covered up nowadays by this painting up here. Okay, we'll take a quick break from our Renaissance art tour to go check out a castle. We're at the Roca which is a castle up on top of a hill. And it's a cool site because it marks the end of what was called communal rule. So starting in the 11th century and for a couple hundred years, 
many of the prominent cities in northern Italy were sort of self-governing. In the 13th and 14th century, power began to be consolidated up around here by a Milanese family, the Visconti. The Visconti built this in the 1330s. Leaving the Rocca, we headed back out to resume our Lodo tour and check out some pretty scenery and sights along the way. Our lotto tour continues. This is San Michel Al Poso Bianco, right behind me. Let's head on in. So apparently this church doesn't get visited as much, and the way it works is the door's just unlocked, but you pay to turn the lights on. Just like that, it's all lit up. In the little chapel here on the left, scenes from the life of the Virgin, painted in 1525, and Lodo's final painting from Bergamo. Lorenzo Lotto, stop number three. Looks like this one's gonna be tricky. The blue guy doesn't say where it is. There's no signs here that say what it is. I Googled it, we have a sense of what it looks like. We just now have to find it. Okay, turns out our painting is on display in a museum somewhere. But we're after these things in the wild, so we're gonna move on to our next church and see what we can find there. Across the street is San Bernardino di Pignolo. It's supposed to be closed according to the internet, but the door is wide open. Let's see if there's a Lodo in there or a Lotto in there. Here is Lodo's 1521 work, Madonna and Child, with a whole bunch of saints. This painting is famous largely for the little angel in the foreground that gazes out at the viewer. So our Loto tour has brought us to Santo Spiritu, and as you can see by the giant sign on the wall, uh, we're not the only people who figured out that there's a whole bunch of Lorenzo Loto paintings to look at here in Bergamo. The Paula di Santo Spirito has a lot in common with the Madonna and Child from Pignolo, and it was painted at around the same time. Notice, however, that in this composition, it's the woman on the left who's gazing out off the canvas. And keep an eye out for part two, where we head off to Lake Iseo. The thing about these lovely little villages on hills is they're on hills. <laughs> <laughs>